pressure on Senator Sanders intensifying before these headlines from the weekend had even sunken in. Stop thinking of Bernie Sanders as a gadfly. Start thinking of him as the front runner. There were several headlines like that. And it is true, Sanders currently tops the polls among Democrats who have declared they're running for president. He also leads everyone in fundraising in that group. $18 million in his war chest so far. That momentum comes with just one week to go before the Fox News Bernie Sanders town hall. And here's a preview from the senator. When I go on Fox, what I will say is, look, many of you voted for Donald Trump, but he lied to you. How do you explain that to people who voted for Trump if you don't talk to people who voted for Trump? So there's that matchup. The town hall will be in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is a state that has seen unemployment drop and wages rise since 2016. The biggest growth zone has been in manufacturing. The issue of the economy, perhaps the biggest hill for Bernie Sanders to climb against President Trump's so-called, by the New York Post today, magic wand. That was the title of their op-ed. It cites 480,000 new jobs in manufacturing since President Trump's election and 209,000 jobs in the past 12 months. The magic wand, of course, is a reference to this from then-President Obama, who was talking about then-candidate Trump. He's going to bring all these jobs back. Well, how exactly are you going to do that? What are you going to do? What magic wand do you have? And usually the answer is he doesn't have an answer. So joining me now, Tammy Bruce, president of Independent Women's Voice. Donna Brazil, former DNC chairwoman, both are Fox News contributors. Thank you very much to you both. Great to see you Hi, here ladies. tonight. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I was reading stories over the weekend, Donna, and, you know, all of a sudden it's all about Bernie. You know, Bernie's yeah. the front guy. He's got the most money. He has great name recognition, and he's emerging in, you know, the difficult week for Joe Biden as the front guy. And then all of a sudden there's all this new scrutiny on him about pushing for his tax returns. Do you think that's a coincidence, or do you think that there is some agenda to say, hmm, we got a bunch of other folks out here we really like. Should we knock Bernie down? Too? Oh, first of all, Senator Sanders uh, never took the uh, never took the keys out the car. He kept the engine running. Uh, not only after his defeat in 2016, but in helping Democrats and young people and others prepare themselves to run in 2017, 2018. So I'm not surprised that there's a lot of support for Bernie Sanders, not just among Democrats, but probably independents as well. Are you happy about that? Do you like seeing Bernie in that top spot? Because there was a lot of competition between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, Donna. Well, let me just be very blunt. I am a uh, at-large member of the Democratic National Committee. I don't have a favorite. I like them all. I wish them all That's the best. That's not what they but, said last but time. Early. Everybody said well, last time you guys did have a favorite, and it was definitely Hillary Clinton. So no, that's changed. I, you know, I, I know what I did, and, and honestly, I did not support uh, a candidate. I haven't actually supported a word for a candidate since Al Gore. Uh, so, but no, I think Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders, as well as Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren. We should not uh, look at these early polls and, and proclaim them to be like the Bible, uh, the end of story. No, this is the beginning not. of the process. And you know what? You're going to have an exciting time next week we are. Uh, with Bernie Sanders yeah, in the town hall meeting. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. And, and Tammy, I am too. we are too. So, Tammy, um, you know, with regard to the economy in Pennsylvania, obviously one of the signature states that ended up winning the election for President Trump. Talk to me about what you see as the economic argument between Bernie Sanders and what he's presenting and what has been uh, happening so far in the presidency. Well, I think one of the strengths uh, President Trump has, uh, even as he was candidate, but now he's actually delivered on, on these promises, is that he has a background in delivering economically, that he has said he's, he's promised to do certain things. He did them. Barack Obama didn't understand how that could manifest, uh, and now Americans have, have found that it can happen. So Bernie Sanders has a problem in that he's, he's been just a, a politician, right? So it's about delivering on a business framework and whether or not the American people, for some reason, would want to switch out of this framework where you have such a remarkable uh, economic uh, resurgence uh, that pretty much everyone is recognizing as being uh, remarkable and, and, and astounding. So he's got his, his uh, background and, of course, the, the, the legacy of what he's accomplished. Uh -huh. And I don't think that anyone's going to really think that uh, some idea, either someone who's a socialist or someone who has never run a company or someone who's never been able to deliver, uh, is going to be someone that they should switch to when it comes to the economic 
economic yeah, success let, let, let of get, President Trump. Let me get Donna to respond to that. Donna, what do you say to that? Well, I'd say to Tammy and everyone, uh, when Barack Obama found himself digging out from the recession, uh, many of my conservative friends kept saying, these jobs are not real. Well, the truth is, a job is a job, and not all, not all of them pay as well as we want them to. Bernie Sanders uh, and many of the Democrats are advocating for those who've been left behind, those who want a fair shot, those who want to earn a living wage. There's no inconsistency with what Bernie Sanders is saying, but what Barack Obama said in the past, and what Democrats will be all fighting right, but, for you know, in 2020. I mean, well, the, the comeback the, is going to be that, uh, you know, most of these jobs, in fact, the biggest group that has benefited are people who only have a high school diploma. Um, and, and many of them are the people who fall into the category that you talked about. I, I, there's a couple other things I want to get to, because since I have both of you here tonight, and this um, is for you, Tammy. The, I, I want you to respond to the charge from Pete Buttigieg, uh, the South Bend mayor, um, against Mike Pence when it comes to supports from evangelicals for the current administration. Watch this. And that's the thing I wish the Mike Pences of the world would understand, that if you've got a problem with who I am, your problem is not with me. Your quarrel, sir, is with my creator. Tammy, what do you think? Well, that was, it was odd. It was unprovoked. Uh, it was sanctimonious uh, for the gay individuals uh, who know the vice president. Uh, they know he's not a homophobe or isn't out to get people. There, he's not out to get Mayor Pete or anybody else. Uh, it has been a slander on the vice president uh, because I think what we've seen usually are attacks on people of faith. This presumption that evangelicals or others are automatically homophobes or the need, which is unfortunate, to create straw men in which then to knock them down. So it, I think, will be seen as an act, and I think it will wear thin. Uh, uh, most Americans, uh, I think, like uh, the vice president very much. And his history, or what has been portrayed as his history by, by certain gay activists and the Democrats, mm -hmm. uh, is false. Right. Uh, and I, uh, I think that that's pretty clear. And it's unfortunate for a gay man who's running in this kind of position to once again set up a victimhood framework mm -hmm. when we can compete on the issues and the issues alone. Uh, well, uh, it, uh, Mayor Pete is a man of faith. He's a man of God. And what he was speaking to is the vitriol and the attacks on gays, the attacks... Not uh, by the vice president. Uh, the, 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 the vice president has supported legislation. Tammy, look, I am not sitting here uh, telling you something that you don't know. The truth is, is that gay and lesbians and others have been under tremendous attacks in recent years. And what he did yesterday, I thought, was courageous. He spoke up. He spoke out, and he spoke his truth, and that is something we should encourage everyone well, to his do. Truth well, his truth is individual that, I, I want to get you to weigh in on um, one, more, one more thing here. Um, I was watching another network earlier today talking about the, the B-boys, you know, Bernie and Buttigieg and Beto and Biden, and that they are sucking all the oxygen, Donna, out of the room and taking it away, this, this uh, other network was talking about, taking it away from the women, from people of color, all of that. Here's an interesting response from Stacey Abrams, when asked, you know, is she thinking about running for president and getting into this race? Watch this. Running for president had not been on my timetable this quickly, but the energy and, again, the passion that I'm feeling means that I have to give it serious consideration. Do you think, I want to get your reaction to that, but I also want to know, Donna, do you think that, that the media in general has been sort of favoring these other guys? Yes, that's a simple answer, and, and, and we see it in the coverage. But you know what? At some point, we're going to make sure that women get as much coverage. And maybe, Martha, you'll hold a forum just for I the women. I would love to do that. Call it Ladies' Night. Help and me do that. Friday that would be night, great. And you know, I, uh, on a Thursday night, not a Friday, Thursday <laughs> night, and I will be right there with you. You plan it, and I will be there. Um, I think Thank that would you. be great. Thank you so much to you both. Tammy Bruce, uh, Donna Brazil. thanks to see you.